I'm a covenant man. I'm a covenant man. Living in the riches of my Lord and King. I'm a covenant man. I'm a covenant man. Committed to Him in everything I do. Believe He'll come again. And I know one thing I'm gonna do till then is learn to live in the blessing of Abraham. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Covenant Living broadcast today. We're thrilled to have you here with us this week. I'm David Weeder. This is my beautiful, gorgeous wife, Lynn Weeder, and we are thrilled to have you here with us again. If it's not again, it should be. Why weren't where you been? <laughs> anyway, we're glad you're here. Um, you know, we just enjoy getting into the Word and sharing it with you, and you're just sitting on the other side of this table from us, being part of the family. So let's have a word of prayer, and then we are going to get into the Word for today's uh, Bible study. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to share the things from your kingdom, the principles, the laws that make your kingdom work, because we are citizens now in that kingdom, your Word tells us. And so... We press in to learning things from the user's manual that you, the manufacturer, has written. And we're just, we know your love, you love us. It's all for our benefit. And so we're just eager to find out more and more so that it brings victory into every area of our life. For that's your will for us. And we are so grateful and so thankful for it. Holy Spirit, we open our minds and our hearts to the teaching of the Word today and for revelation that you bring to each and every one of us individually, even beyond what's spoken, to manifest victory in every area, financially, socially, family, physically, in all areas that, that, contain, that concern us, we receive your grace, we receive your love, we receive your faith, and we receive your victory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Well, um, I've got some water here, mm. but you're welcome to make some coffee or tea or, or whatever and just join us. Let's get into this. We're going to begin in Romans chapter 1, if you want to turn there. We have been uh, in a short series, and we'll be continuing it today, on why why do we need to even study faith? You know what what's what's important about it? Why do we need to get into that? And if you haven't done so, um, go to our YouTube channel. It's all on demand. All of our broadcasts are are available free on our website through YouTube. Our partners our partners made that possible, and so all of it's available for free to for you to study. So go back into the previous weeks, and you'll. You'll see down through, we're covering 13 points, and there's many, many more, but there's 13 in my outline of why do we study faith. And so we actually, last week, we spent a considerable amount of time on number eight, the gift of righteousness or right standing with God is by faith. Number nine, uh, we discussed uh, previously, cannot function in grace without faith. Because we're saved by grace. Grace provided our whole salvation package, but we're saved by grace through faith. It's faith that reaches into the spirit realm, the kingdom of God, and brings the manifestation of everything that grace has provided into our lives. But just like it's through faith that that happens, it's through love that the faith is strong enough to make that happen. And so if a lot of people don't make that connection, if they're not, if they're struggling, they see that God has provided all of these things and they're trying to use their faith to get it. They, 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 they know that they're supposed to use their faith to grab hold of it and they're just struggling and it's not taking place and they can't figure out why. Check your love walk because faith, we're going to see this, we're going to get into this a little bit further today. Faith works by, that word B-Y in the, in the King James Version means through a channel, like, like through a channel. Your faith works through the channel of love. So if you have a weak love walk, you're going to have weak faith. If you've got a strong love walk, you're going to have strong faith. And so 
you cannot function in grace without faith. And you cannot function effectively in grace without faith that's powered by love. Number 10, we saw that the word does you no good without faith. Hebrews 4, 2 talked about the, the gospel was preached unto the uh, Israelites just as it was to, as it is to us, but it profited them nothing. They didn't go into the promised land because it was not mixed with faith. So you can even have something as powerful as the word of God, but if you don't make mix faith with it, it's a book laying on the table. It doesn't do you any more good. Well, I mean, if somebody gives you a check and you don't believe they have enough funds to cash it, you're not going to benefit from depositing that check in your account. Because mm -hmm, we won't. <laughs> All right. Number 11. Here we go. You cannot live the Christian life without faith. Turn to Romans if you haven't already. Turn to Romans chapter 1. And we'll see where it says this is, this is actually so important that, I my marker in the wrong spot, that the scripture, the Lord told us multiple times in both covenants, this very fact. Oh, it's because I was in the wrong. I was in this sword instead of this sword. That was the issue. Okay. I thought I had to mark it right. Mm. All right. Romans chapter 1, verse 17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just, the righteous, the saved ones, the born-again ones, shall live by faith. Babe, hey, would you go ahead and look up the, the um, Habakkuk verse? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to turn over, while she's looking that up, I'm going to turn over to Galatians. Galatians chapter 3. And verse 11. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident. For the just shall live by faith. Now, Hebrews talk about out of the mouth of two or three witnesses. This one is out of the mouth of many witnesses. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 38. Now the just shall live by faith. <laughs> and then even in the first covenant in Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him but the just shall live by faith. So, I mean, it's identical. It's even the same wording. Yeah. The just hmm. shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. But you can even stack the odds in your mind. <laughs> because if you're like, because a, a lot of times in the, in the Amplified Classic, it even specifies the, the just shall live by his faith. Mm -hmm. But we, we've got to, we got a, what do they call it? A life hack. <laughs> Here in Galatians chapter 2, let's see, and verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Now listen. And the life which I now live in this flesh, I live by the faith of of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Now, I can see where you may have an issue wondering if your faith is strong enough mm -hmm. to live by. But the faith of the Son of God? Hey, Jesus' faith is strong enough for whatever you need. And the life which we now live in this flesh, we have the ability because of what he has done, we have the ability to live by his faith. If you want to get real nitpicky about it, our faith is his faith. Mark eleven twenty two. it says, the King James says, have faith in God. 
the actual Greek translation is have the faith of God. Well, of course, when you get born again, that faith is a fruit of the Spirit. It's His faith is the only reason we have faith. So it is the faith of the Son of God, and His faith is enough and more than enough. But what I want to point out here is what kind of life is, you know, we live the Christian life, the just shall live by faith. I mean, I've seen, I've been, I've traveled the world a lot of times, and there's various different levels of living life. Mm -hmm. What kind of life should the just be living? I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> We're going to look at it right now in Ephesians, and I'm going to read it in the Amplified Classic Bible. Ephesians, and we're going to go to chapter 2. Now, you really need to take time to read all of chapter 2. We may read a good portion of it right now hmm. um, because, I mean, it just really spells our life out. Beginning in verse 1 here, it says, And you he made alive when you were dead. By, dead by your trespasses and sins, in which at one time you walked habitually. You were following the course and fashion of this world. You were under the sway of the tendency of this present age, following the prince of the power of error. This is talking about before you got born again. You were obedient to and under the control of the demon spirit that still constantly works in the sons of disobedience, the careless, the rebellious, and the unbelieving who go against the purposes of God. Among these, we as well as you once lived and conducted ourselves in the passions of our flesh, our behavior governed by our corrupt and sensual nature, obeying the impulses of the flesh and the thoughts of the mind, our cravings dictated by our senses and our dark imaginings, we were then by nature children of God's wrath and heirs of his indignation like the rest of mankind but God. <laughs> Man, <laughs> you don't ever want to read verses 1 through 3 without verse 4. <laughs> but God, so rich is he in his mercy because of and in order to satisfy the great and wonderful and intense love with which he loved us, even when we were dead by our own shortcomings and trespasses, he made us alive together in fellowship and in union with Christ. He gave us the very life, listen, listen, we're talking about living the life. He gave us the very life of Christ himself, the same new life with which he quickened him. For it is by grace, his favor and mercy, which you did not deserve, that you are saved. You're delivered from judgment and made partaker of Christ's salvation. And he raised, 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 past tense. This has already taken place in the spirit man. He has raised us up together with Jesus and made us sit down together, giving us joint seating with him in the heavenly sphere by virtue of us being in Christ Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed one, he did this that he might clearly demonstrate through the ages to come. Listen, listen, the immeasurable, limitless, surpassing riches of his free grace, his unmerited favor in his kindness and goodness of heart towards us, towards you, towards me. He didn't have to work so much towards her, but, you know, <laughs> towards all of us. Only you have to do that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> towards us in Christ Jesus, for it is by free grace, God's unmerited favor, that you are saved. 
delivered from judgment and made partaker of Christ's salvation. Remember, we're talking about the life the Christian should live through our faith. And this salvation is not of yourself. It's not of your own doing. It came not through your own striving, but it is the gift of God, not because of works, not the fulfillment of the law's demands, lest any man should boast. You know, if it was works, if it was, it was, if, if somebody could be good enough of their own accord, then they would have right to boast about how good they are and how they did everything right and, and how that's what made them okay in God's standing. <laughs> They ain't nobody that good in of themselves. Uh, but in Christ, we, hey, we're just reading it. In Christ. Well, and a lot of times you hear people say, well, at least I haven't done that. Mm -hmm. And that's a version of boasting of, okay, I might have lied or I might have done this, but I didn't do all the stuff they're doing. That's self-righteousness. That's being right in your own sight. And that isn't what actually brings you into that covenant with God. Yeah. And you can tell they're not expressing gratefulness. That, mm. you know, hey, I've, <laughs> I'm learning, I'm growing, I'm getting better, I'm, I'm, I'm doing better. That's not the attitude they're saying that in. No. <laughs> you should be striving <laughs> to become more. You can't increase in holiness. That's, that's a good point. You cannot increase in righteousness. You have been made the righteousness of God. You are in right standing with God and there is nothing you can do about it because Jesus made you that way. He manufactured, we're going to see that in a minute. He manufactured you that way. But you can grow in holiness, okay? You can become increasingly holy in line with God's holiness. But that's a growth process and we're all at different <laughs> rungs of the ladder on that process. For it is by free grace, God's unmerited favor, that you are saved, delivered from judgment, made partakers of Christ's salvation through our faith. This salvation is not of yourselves, for your, it's not of your own doing. It came not through your own striving, but it is the gift of God. It is the gift of God. It is the gift of God. Go down to verse 10. Now listen, this is the, we're talking about the life that the Christian should be living. For we are God's own handiwork. His workmanship. God don't make no junk. We're His workmanship. Recreated in Christ Jesus. Born anew that we may do those good works. We can, we can, grow, we can grow in that holiness. We do those good works which God predestined, planned beforehand, for us, taking paths which he prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them, living the good life, which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. Living the good life. What is the good life? Well, it's a life without sin and sickness and disease. It's a life without poverty and lack, watching your children go hungry and not having clothes. It's a life of abundance. Jesus said, I have come. The thief came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that they might have life, and it's lived by faith, that they might have life and life more abundantly. The Amplified Classic says, till it overflows. Wow. That's not saying that there won't be opportunities to stand for these things. That's where the that's faith comes in. But that's something that's misunderstood a lot, is if a challenge arises, that doesn't necessarily mean, oh my gosh, you were wrong because this challenge came up. No, you Satan gonna, attacks. Yeah, matter of fact, the, the the more you live by faith, the more challenges. But you can walk in peace in it because you mm -hmm. know there is an answer. Because mm -hmm. he said he gives us the peace that passes all understanding. So even if it looks like all hell is breaking loose around you, which sometimes it will, you have the ability by faith. That's why it's so important to study these things. By faith, 
which works by love, to press into that peace. When and you that know love, your father loves you, yeah, and he made a plan for you, mm -hmm. that faith in that love lets you, makes it easier to latch hold of it. If some, if you think somebody's angry at you, and let's say they had said, "I'll pay your rent," but then you do something and you think they're mad at you, it's hard for you to go to them and say, "So did you yes. still want to pay my rent?" Mm -hmm. But if you know they love you, even if you did something that they might not have been thrilled about, you're like, I, I know you weren't real happy about that that I did. And I apologize. I made the best decision I thought in the moment. And so please forgive me for that. So let's go on. Let's fellowship. Now, you still good on paying that rent? You don't have to ask God, are you still good with that? Because you know he already gave his word. Something that you need to renew your mind mm. to on these things. This is, Christianity is not a religion. It's had a religion made out of it. But Christianity is God and sons, God and family. And look, look here in Mark, when he gave the, the Great Commission, Mark chapter 16, um, and the very last verse, you know, this is down after, you know, you, they, the believers shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover and, and, you know, drink any deadly thing. It won't hurt them. All the way down here. So the Lord Jesus, verse 19, so the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven and he sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out, they, the disciples, now the apostles, because he sent them out. That's what apostle means, sent one. They went out and preached everywhere while the Lord kept working with them and confirming the message by the attesting signs and miracles that closely accomplished them. Now, was he working with the word? Yes, absolutely. But he was working with them. There's, there's other places in the New Testament that says we're co-laborers together with, with him. him. Okay? This is the whole, love mm. is the whole reason for this. This is a copy of two covenants, first covenant and second covenant. The motivating force behind a covenant is love. It is the greater who doesn't need the lesser making a covenant with the lesser. Adam messed up. <laughs> He's messed up bad. And God, who is infinite, he is all powerful, he is himself didn't have to do anything except just let him go. Mm -hmm. But love can't do that. Love said, look here, all right, we're going to make this covenant, and, and we're going to get them. We're going to start working, and we're going to get back to where things needed to be, which he did when Jesus was raised from the dead. Love is the motivating force behind wanting us to live the good life. But, and this, this is what I want you to get. It's working together with God. Everything we get is from God. But there's things that he's assigned to us that we have to walk out to. And it's that cooperation together. You know, he said he's prearranged and made ready the paths to walk to live the good life but you actually have to walk the path. He's not going to force you. He's not going to grab you. <laughs> in, in the first covenant, he put it this way. He said, I've placed before you life and death, blessing and cursing. But then love just couldn't stand it. He said, choose life <laughs> that you and your children may live. He's given you the instruction manual, the cheat, the cheat sheet, so to speak. You know, he's like, do this. Do it this way. Do it this way because this leads to life. This way. But you have to do it. You know, you can walk paths that lead to destruction. Proverbs talks about that. There's a right, there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof is destruction. So, hey, we got we got the answers to all the questions right here. So let's be God and sons and walk the good life that He's provided, because love wants it more than you want it. 
love wants to bless your children more than you want to bless your children. And you know how much you want to bless your children. Man. I don't, uh, uh, we, <laughs> the Holy Ghost just went just, just different directions, but that's the life that it takes faith to live because you've got to trust in God. And the more you realize how much God loves you and he is love the and there's nothing you can do. Trust. Yeah, the easier it is. That's why your faith becomes more effective, efficient, and mighty through love. That's the way the system works. Don't go anywhere, because Lynn and I'll be right back. At the beginning of 2023, the Lord opened a magnificent door for David Weeder Ministries to take demonstrations of love and the message of the word of faith to the pastors and the people of Ukraine. And in April, the partners and friends of David Weeder Ministries sent us to do just that. The testimonies of healings, emotional and physical recovery, and the word of the living God energizing these men of God came pouring in. We want to thank you, partners. We want to thank you, friends, for providing the finances for us to go into all the world and preach this gospel of the kingdom as a witness to all nations. Jesus is Lord. Thank you. We are so thankful to our partners for being able to make that happen. It was uh, it was an overwhelming response. The, the, the pastors were so very grateful. As a matter of fact, we have something we want to let you know about. Um, the, the ministry that we went over there with, these pastors that are frontline pastors, they were from the cities right there on the front lines. They came and asked this ministry, or not our ministry, but the ministry we went there with, to start a Bible school. They already have a Bible school in one area. They wanted a Bible school right there on the front lines. And they asked specifically if we could come and teach them Again. Again, for a week at a time here and there, multiple multiple trips. And so we want to give you an opportunity to send us. That's that's Again, what the scripture says. We were sent by our partners last the first time, that's right. And uh we we've got an opportunity to go multiple times and impart the word of faith and love to these people. And it's a Bible school. So these people will be taking it out all over that region and blessing humanity. So you have an opportunity to sow into these trips and into the spreading of the gospel throughout that whole area of the world. Just go to our website, davidweeder.org, and you can click to give and choose Ukraine to designate it. You can text the word Ukraine to our text to give number, and let's make these, this happen. And thank you so much. And don't forget that Jesus is Lord. Thank you partners and friends for helping make this broadcast possible. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram. You can also listen to our broadcast on iTunes. Contact us at davidweeder.org or call us at 1-800-988-5380.